The furious racism and fanatical racial supremacy of Hitler did not prevent him from forming alliances to try to take over the entire planet. In today's video, we will explore the relationship that united the Japanese Empire and the Third Reich during World War II. Get ready for a new and exciting installment of military history. Since Japan emerged from its territorial and cultural isolation in the mid-19th century, the nation underwent extreme westernization to compete with Europe and prove that they were part of global development. The paradigm shift was so radical that the Japanese became allies with Great Britain in World War I, finding themselves on the side attacking German colonies in the Pacific. After the war, Europeans granted them more territory in Asia, mainly from German possessions in the Pacific. However, they were not treated equally during the Paris Peace Conference, strictly for racial reasons. This was a wound that Japan as a nation would never forget. Once the New World map was consolidated, Japan believed itself racially and politically superior to many states in continental Asia, leading to an expansionist campaign. The Japanese Empire aimed to acquire vast territories in China to exploit its resources. After the global Great Depression of the 1930s, the Japanese government became more militaristic and began expanding with voracious hunger. The invasion of Manchuria in 1931 was the culmination of this imperial ambition. The League of Nations, established by the Treaty of Versailles, condemned Japan's advance, but diplomatically, they could do nothing about it. The attached document from that time reflects what happened. In February, the Japanese declare Manchuria independent and install the puppet state Manchukuo. The League of Nations condemns the move, but is too weak and fractured to do anything about it. In this context, the unlikely rapprochement between Japan and Germany began. Examining the writings and radio broadcasts of these two countries in the late 1920s reveals a growing mutual admiration. Particularly in aspects of Japanese culture, experts admired the Nazi Germany's respect for military power territorial expansion and charismatic leadership. Moreover, Japan saw itself as an Asian mirror of what the Third Reich envisioned for Europe, viewing each other as global powers. Japanese intellectuals proactively adapted and modified German ideology for Japanese public consumption. This made Hitler and Nazism more palatable to Japanese society, retaining what they liked and removing elements that could generate rejection. With the rise of the Nazis in the early 1930s, Japanese intellectuals and thinkers became staunch advocates and supporters of the Third Reich. For this reason, the Germans began to consider their Japanese allies as honorary Aryans to generate acceptance among the German people for this distinct race. Despite the formal agreement, the Nazis in Germany heavily discriminated against the Japanese, curtailing their rights for not belonging to the Aryan race. As mentioned earlier, the deepening of the Great Depression, the most severe crisis in the history of capitalism until then, facilitated Hitler's rise to power in Germany and the rise of ultranationalists in Japan. Resentment against the imperialist hegemons of the time, Great Britain and France, and the frustration of revisionist and expansionist goals of Japanese and Germans during this crisis provided common ground between the two countries. Japanese imperialism and Nazism were united, particularly by fierce ideologies of racial superiority, each in its territory, translating into ambitions of dominance and empire building in East Asia and Eastern Europe. These racisms one promoting Japanese, claims to lead the peoples of Asia against European white dominance, and the other strictly and fanatically pro-Aryan, found common ground to operate as a relentless, violent, and discriminatory tandem. Just as the Holocaust occurred in Nazi Germany, the Japanese also committed racial massacres against their enemies, as seen in the case of the Nanking Massacre. 
The fall of the city on 13 December sparks a wave of atrocities by the victorious Japanese. Troops rape thousands of Chinese women and force thousands more into sexual slavery. Some 40,000 Chinese civilians are tortured and killed. Women and children are buried alive. The world is outraged and condemns this rape of Nanking. In both countries, the Fuhrer and the Emperor found a common enemy that unified their discourse of hatred, communism. Thus, the initial actions of these leaders in power were to suppress, imprison, and eliminate political opposition, including the most ardent communists, consensus social parties, and unions. They then heavily militarized to be prepared for any possibility of military conflict. While parallels with the Japanese case should not be exaggerated, it is not difficult to understand how Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan could recognize similar paths up to this point. The question to ask is what truly drove the concrete ties between the Third Reich and Hirohito's Japan. In this regard, the figure of Joachim von Ribbentrop, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Third Reich from 1938, is crucial. Ribbentrop, a businessman and ardent Nazi fanatic in line with Hitler's ideological vision, saw strategic opportunities in getting closer to Japan. With the contact of the businessman and diplomat, Dr. Friedrich Wilhelm Hack, who had extensive connections with Japanese industrial and military elites, discussions were initiated. The Japanese military establishment welcomed Hack's overtures and expressed considerable interest in creating strong ties with Hitler's Germany. This approach was motivated by two central reasons. Firstly, there was great enthusiasm for the German state to distance itself from its existing ties with Chiang Kai-shek's China. China was within Tokyo's primary sphere of interests, and the more isolated and defenseless it was, the better for the Japanese. Secondly, the other main source of rapprochement was concern about the Soviet Union and its potential expansion of power and influence. Military attaché and later ambassador in Berlin, Hiroshi Oshima, presented an interesting proposal to Ribbentrop. Oshima's offer, known as the anti common Turn Pact, revolved around a common opposition to the communist threat posed by the two countries. This intelligent deal gained Hitler's enthusiastic support and was signed on November 25, 1936. In the pact, Imperial Japan and Nazi Germany committed to assisting each other in combating the threat posed by the Communist International. Although the pact did not specifically mention the Soviet Union to avoid unnecessary confrontations, it was clearly directed at Stalin's nation, which was then in hostilities with Japan. Japanese animosity towards the Soviets was much more direct than that of the Germans. At the time, Japan's successful entry into Manchuria had aroused Moscow's fears about what might come next, given Japan's demonstrated imperialistic greed. Subsequently, in 1936, Stalin's USSR in Mongolia, located in full Asian territory, had signed a mutual cooperation agreement obliging each party to come to the aid of the other in case of aggression by a third party. Different international alliances were highly strategic and seemed to be preparing for a conflict that was about to erupt. At the end of August 1939, just before Hitler invaded Poland and while World War II was about to begin in Europe, the Soviet Union and Japan were gearing up for one of the biggest tank battles along the border between Mongolia and Manchuria as seen in footage from that time. The Battle of Kalkin Gol would become a turning point in the course of World War II and likely history. 
The resounding failure of the Japanese army forced the Empire of the Rising Sun to reconsider the conquest of Russian Far East and Siberia, abandoning the quest for the abundant natural resources of these lands. The military consequence of that defeat translated into Japanese military expansion towards the south driven by the Imperial Navy. The plan was to seize the Philippines, Indochina, Burma, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, then colonies of the United Kingdom, France, the Netherlands, and the United States. Faced with this new perspective, the situation in Asia changed dramatically because within two years, Japanese colonial ambitions would culminate in the bombing of Pearl Harbor, triggering the Pacific War against the United States in 1941. Undoubtedly, a pivotal moment in the war. December 7th, 1941, a day of infamy. Even as Japanese diplomats were conferring with Secretary of State Hull on peace measures, Nipponese planes were swooping down on Pearl Harbor. This pictorial record includes both U.S. films and pictures made by the enemy as they dropped their load of death on the naval base, on Wheeler Field, on civilian homes and schools. However, before the Americans entered the war, there was another agreement between Japan and Germany that was fundamental for the development of World War II and the alliance between these two countries. The agreement known as the Tripartite Pact, signed on September 27, 1940, not only involved the Japanese and the Nazis, but also brought Mussolini's fascist Italy into the trio. This agreement formalized the alliance among the three countries, later known in history as the Evil Axis Powers. The signatories agreed to assist each other in case of an attack by a nation with which none of the signatories was at war. This provision aimed to serve as a warning to the United States, urging it to stay out of the wars Germany and Italy were waging in Europe and North Africa, as well as to refrain from interfering with Japan's conquests in East Asia. The ceremony took place in Berlin, in the presence of Hitler, and was signed by diplomats from each country. In the Japanese pact, Japan acknowledged the leadership of Germany and Italy in establishing a new order in Europe, assuming the triumph and expansion of Hitler's Nazism and Mussolini's fascism. In return, these two European nations legitimized Japan's right to establish a new order in Greater East Asia, centralizing control in Japanese hands. Returning to the earlier thread, the Tripartite Pact was invoked in 1941 after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. On December 8, the United States declared war on Japan, and four days later, Germany and Italy responded by declaring war on the United States. Despite the gestures, the pact was largely considered ineffective, as Germany and Japan had divergent interests and were largely pursuing their own agendas. Neither provided military support nor resources, as each was preoccupied in its own territory. By this point in the conflict, Italy was practically defeated and on the verge of becoming a puppet state of Germany, which was battling the Allied forces in European territory. On the other hand, Japan also ignored the pact when, in April 1941, it signed a neutrality treaty with the Soviet Union. Viewing it as a potential ally if the United States defeated the Nazis and directly confronted the Japanese. For this reason, when two months after that secret agreement, Hitler's Germany invaded the communist country, the Japanese rejected calls from the Third Reich to intervene on behalf of the Nazis. The evident impediment was that the alliance was limited from the start by the great physical distances separating the Axis powers. For the most part, it could be said that Japan and Germany fought separate wars. Each of the totalitarian regimes continued to fight the Allies on its own, gradually weakening and losing ground until they disintegrated. Once World War II officially concluded with the defeat of the Japanese Empire, the main war criminals in Germany and Japan were quickly sought to be tried in 1946. While the Japanese had to face the Tokyo trials, the Nuremberg trials addressed the major German war crimes. The goal of the Allied prosecutors 
was to portray the international cooperation between the Third Reich and Imperial Japan as a carefully planned conspiracy, specifically to divide the world between the two Axis partners. Although there was limited and cautious military cooperation between Japan and Germany during World War II, there are no documents that conclusively corroborate or prove long-term planning or real coordination of the military operations of both powers. The alliance between Japan and Germany during World War II may seem strange as it did not yield many results in terms of warfare or strategy. Each had its own specific objectives and apparently, they only coincided in having common enemies, the United Kingdom, the United States, and France. Both the Japanese Empire and the Third Reich saw in the other a possibility of an alliance if both succeeded in their endeavors. But it did not happen that way. The exhaustion of the offensive capacity of the Axis and the increasingly intense pressure from the Allies ultimately sealed the bland fate of the Tripartite Pact with Nazi Germany surrendering in May 1945 and Imperial Japan following suit a few months later after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Japanese foreign minister signed the instrument of surrender, followed by the Army Chief of Staff. General MacArthur signed. Eyewitnesses saw his hands tremble. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world, and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. The most surprising aspect of this alliance was Hitler's openness to work with the Japanese despite his fervent racism, which he clearly concealed when negotiating with the Japanese. What led the Fuhrer and Emperor Hirohito to forge such an overtly unproductive alliance between the two countries remains a curious subject of study for historians and specialists. In this way, we are reaching the end of today's video. We appreciate you for sticking around until the end, and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming installments of Military History.